Um, hi everyone, welcome to the Dalawa District Homestead Community Alliance meeting. Very glad to have you here. Thank you for sharing your Tuesday evening with us. Can everyone on Zoom hear us? If yes, please say yes. Yes. Oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so just I'll give a quick overview on the upcoming community engagement strategy that we'll be trying out for the year and we'll be seeing how successful this could be. So for there will be two kinds of um two kinds of community meetings per se. So there will be district-wide Olmsted Community Alliance meetings where you fo where we focus on part projects that is relevant to the entire district. And then there is project specific meetings that is more focused on a project. So some of you may have been in the playground meeting a few weeks ago that was specifically on a playground project because there was more time needed to focus on that project. Does that make sense so far? And everyone here today, you are in a district wide meeting where we will talk about all the upcoming and ongoing projects in the Delaware district. A quick overview of the team myself, Z, and then Brian, who a lot of you are familiar with. Today we have Madeline, our special gardens manager, who is giving an overview of the Rose Garden restoration. Joanne Flores is our gift coordinator. She is handles all commemorative giving as well as in our um, racial equity committee and any other staff here right now. And we also have a few members from the Young Professionals for Olmsted Parks class of 2023 who are volunteering with us today and also getting a little highlight on how community, community meetings work and the conservancy. Some individuals that you might be familiar with. And if you golf at Delaware Park, this is the golf team. So before we go into the project, I wanted to introduce Kelly Johnson, Dr. Kelly Johnson with the Buffalo AKG. She will be giving a quick spill on the AKG's timeline. Good morning, everyone. Um, and I am Dr. Callie Johnson. I'm with the Buffalo AKG Art Museum. I'm the director of communications and community engagement there. And it's a pleasure to be here with you all this evening. I'm excited to learn more about what's happening in the Delaware District. And we know everyone is in high anticipation around the opening of the new museum. And we look forward to welcoming the entire community in the months to come for that grand opening, which will be on June 12th. So, um, stay tuned. We'll be making more announcements as we get closer. But in the interim, if you, I see we have some public art on the one of the boards here. If you haven't gone out to see some of the amazing public art, it's amazing that's out in the city of Buffalo and surrounding areas. So please feel free to look at those uh, as you prepare for the opening of the Buffalo AKG Art Museum. We're doubling the size of the campus. We'll be able to showcase more of the collection. We'll have free and accessible spaces on the campus for the community as well as paid spaces so that there's parity between the two. But we're just looking to be more welcoming as an institution and welcome the entire, not only the Western New York community, but also internationally. We're an international museum that's right here in the city of Buffalo. So we look forward to welcoming all of you. And please feel free to, ask, to reach out to me if you ever have questions. Yes. Is there going to be a, some kind of a celebration that you have to register for or purchase tickets for June 12th? Um, well, that's our ribbon cutting day. So um, after that, we'll be rolling out a series of different events for membership and also for um, that will be open to the public as well. So you can stay tuned and look on buffaloakg.org, our website, and you'll be able to register for tickets during that time, during that week. And now we're going to the topics, Brian Boots. If you have any questions in the meantime, we ask that you wait 
till the questions to the end. And at the end of the meeting, there's about 15 minutes where this open house will resume and you can also ask specific project questions to the experts in the room. Let's see. Yeah, so as he said, we're kind of changed up the format a little bit. Again, there's a lot of panels around the room, a lot of projects going on. Unfortunately, this handout got kind of buried in the in the mix. Uh, so if you leave, please grab one of those off the table uh, over on the uh, right by the door. Um, this is a this is kind of a, a handout. It's like a summary of kind of the you know the basic questions of funding, scope, status on a longer list of projects that I'm going to cover in detail here. Um, so again, grab this on your, on your way out of the room. Uh, and you got a lot of great things to talk about here in the park um, and, and Delaware District. Um, so again, we're trying to sort of focus conversation on things that we think are either important for you to know for this coming year, construction happening, it's going to impact your park user experience, or things we really need your feedback on right now. So. Um, again, so many great projects that are going on. We can't talk about them all uh, um, in one of these sort of general update sessions. So one of the big projects, we've been out to the community end of last year for the session. We've done some public surveying, uh, got some feedback on that, had sort of a design development session about this project last month is the Holden Playground. Um, uh, tremendously generous resources brought to the table by our council member, Joel Farrelletto, uh, as well as his partner at the county um, to bring us uh, about half a million dollars to reconstruct um, the Holden Playground. Well, I'm familiar with this uh, uh, underwhelming playground experience. Um, we're looking to change something about that. So again, the existing site kind of floating out in the middle of the lawn. Again, we've gone through this, identifying the accessibility issues of no uh, fully accessible pathways. It's kind of floating in the middle of the lawn, baking in the hot sun. Proximity to Amherst Street being problematic. Process. I've been working through this design development process. We've shifted the playground. Um, we've added accessible pathways, designated accessible parking, uh, and what came out of that last meeting, in addition to finalizing the design um, that I'll share with you guys, uh, was an interest in sort of figuring out some way to buffer uh, physically, you know, not you know necessarily like creating a you know gigantic mounds and a moat or anything <laughs> crazy, but just some way to sort of contain that northern side, even though we're moving it further away from Andrew Street. An interest in again just sort of some level of containment. So we're going to work out those details. Um, but just for your sense of view, here's a little arrow. So that's the direction we're looking at things. Um, here is our sort of full playground experience. So we've got elements for the five to 12 year olds, a large, acceptable, sort of multi dimensional major feature, features for the two to five year olds, separated swings, but also sort of a, a major piece of infrastructure as well as some great panels. And then a number of sort of independent features in the center for everybody to enjoy. So to summarize the features that we presented, a range of options in the community selected for the, for the two to two to five age. We've got a couple types of, 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 of slides from a variety of options, a couple types of climbers, again, from a variety of options. Um, I used to go through and try and go through the names on all these, but they're such crazy names. I don't know if they're going to bother. You can read the names, uh, mm -hmm. but we went through an effort of looking at all panels along here. And again, from a variety of options, people really honed in and selected, actually completely changed the entire list of panels that we had suggested at that meeting, which is great. Um, you know, just get that side of sort of feedback. Um, but had some parents of young kids in the room saying, you know, this is the kind of stuff my kids want to do. This is really fun. And I'm just like, so they're just going to post up shop and, you know, have some imaginary, you know, uh, uh, retail operation at the imagination table. Um, but then as well for the five to 12 year olds, a couple more aggressive slides, again, some side by side stuff. Um, we uh, uh, had, a, had a long debate on the topsy-turvy turvy spinner 
There was another spinner that I thought would be a lot of fun for me to use, but no one else wanted it. So uh, that one was more fun for all ages. Um, so that's the direction we had it. Uh, but then again, a lot of cool climbing options and different sort of features in terms of getting up to and around um, as a part of the, the, the five to 12 um, selected. And then as well, some, 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 some panels specifically at the ADA accessible entrance point ramping to a, to, a, to a platform. As I circle back to the dark review, you'll, you'll see selected panels associated with that. Um, and then of course, swings, swings for all abilities, all ages, all uh, gathered together. Uh, and then as well, these are independent features, the Omni Spinner, and we saw this is fun and then it's kind of a seesaw level, but for a group. And then again, if you have accessibility issues to get into the seats, you can actually occupy the center space and kind of get, get the jostling motion uh, right there in the uh, middle as well. Um, so we'll go here uh, to sort of look at it again, sort of it's like large, vast improvement on what's there. But we think also with, again, the resources we were, we were able to get to the table from our elected representatives, um, you know, a really nice playground uh, in general. The one thing that we are still working out is the surfacing. Um, so again, the city of Buffalo uh, has, um, you know, a legacy of basically exclusively using the engineered wood fiber. That's what all the playgrounds are currently at, uh, with some exceptions in the city parks. Uh, where we've done a couple poured in place rubber issues. We did one at MLK Park with Kaboom a, a, a few years back. Uh, we've already been running into maintenance issues with that, where we actually had to have them come back and resurface that entire uh, surface about two years after it was done. So there's some challenges there. There's another surface on the table, which is a, which is a, uh, it's called Forever Lawn, looks like grass. Um, it's again fall, fall zone safe, um, and just sort of a different character, uh, potentially a little easier to sort of uh, do maintenance on. Uh, so we are working with the city to make sure that we don't make any mistakes on this sort of thing. It's, a, it's sort of a first step into this in a, a major way. Um, so the city's asking some tough questions. We're asking some tough questions. These I know got a list of, of other playgrounds that they solved this. We're going to do some fact checking looking around, we talked to the manufacturer. Um, so we're really taking our time to make sure that, that, that we're making a really good recommendation to the city. Uh, and, but again, the last step in this, sort of wrapping it all up and, you know, working and finalizing the approvals with the city so we can get this equipment ordered. But why it's, why it's urgent right now to sort of finalize this and get this moving, it's about a six month time frame between when you place the order and when that order arrives on site. So we're already looking at a mid-September installation at this point in time. If we, if we, if we in this room wave magic wand and said, this is finalized here now, uh, that's when this, we'd be getting this, this disorder in. So again, we're gonna do our best working with the city to make sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Uh, and um, with that in mind, I think we're gonna, you know, we appreciate everyone's involvement through the surveys and the multiple levels of meetings, kids getting involved. I think we've got a question in the back there, maybe. All right, let's have it. Good translator. You want the turf? You want the turf? Yeah. <laughs> I also want the turf. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, just to talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, the, the manufacturer who's obviously biased, it's the same through the process. It, it opens up a level of enjoyment of the playground where it's almost like your living room, where it's like kids will just sort of lie down on the ground and just start playing kind of in the lawn. You, you know, something you would never do in wood chips. Uh, so, so, the, so there is the, sort of a, an enjoyment value separate from you know, all the other issues. So it's, it's certainly a great value add, um, but again, you know, we want to make sure working with the city, it's, it's something we can maintain. Yes. Um, just curious about why it's 
spread out some like that. See another playground because they're a little bit more closer together. So um, this might be just like a bad way to look at it in these 3D models. You know, there's still a lot of, uh, you know, I guess room for improvement in these, these sorts of uh, illustrations. But basically, there are fall zones associated with each one of these, kind of like a cloud around them. And, you know, we're working with the designers. They've set those up. And those things are placed edge to edge in terms of the fall zones associated. Some fall zones can overlap, others cannot. Um, so I can go back and verify, uh, but uh, from what I understand and from what we've said through our conversations, you know, in terms of the space needed around these features um, for safety uh, of use, uh, they are kind of as close as they can be. But I will verify that. One more question Will there be benches for parents to sit on? Yes, yes. If you can see the bench pads, uh, and not terribly well illustrated, um, but but yeah, benches not only around the north side, the containment uh, level, but also on the south side where the where the trees are, you can you know that are modeled in here. There will be picnic tables set up and other places to gather you know, on that on that south side as well. Uh, so that was one thing. Again, also came through through the conversation was um, you know uh, equipment for the for the adults. In the public school. Yeah. Can you describe the access to the place we got to the rabbi car? How much longer does the parents walk? Have the address to the park? Yeah, I kind of skipped over this, but to orient you, so here's the Coleman entrance to the corner of the park here. Entrance. There's on street parking on Holden. Uh, there's also a Crandall Drive. There's angle parking along Crandall Drive. As I mentioned, we're going to designate a couple of handicap spots uh, at this entrance um, at that handicap access point. Um, but from the existing conditions, which was you know parking along Colvin, parking along Crandall, uh, we're sort of on a larger topic looking at you know the parking regulations all around the perimeter of the park. Um, and sort of verifying those, um, but they are, you know, in the simplest form, shorter walk um, from interesting And it's currently, it's also an acceptable path. So that green line is a uh, roadway? That's a new pathway. Pathway. Yeah. yeah. So parking, walkway, playground, parking, bike rack associated, walkway. So yeah, I mean, I, unfortunately, I don't have a scale on here, but we're, we're, we're talking about less than 100 feet. Is there, a there is no uh, uh, sort of brick and mortar restroom in this area of the of the of the park, uh, and there are a lot of issues around the park system. Uh, porta potties are the supplemental, obviously not ideal. Um, you know, as we continue to talk with you know the the, the uh, zoo and their facilities there's you know things that could appear on the on the on, on the horizon um, but uh, at this point in time um, that's not part of this this, this project yes sir and two questions are the circles trees and is the existing player going to be grass over yeah oh yeah uh yeah so yeah so this is the kind of visual view of a tree from above this is important because we sort of think about uh, tree protection. So the drip line of the tree being, you know, where we want to build a lot of infrastructure underneath the, uh, the critical root zone of any tree. So yeah, those, those are trees. There's also additional trees being modeled kind of out of the area of impact. And yeah, the entire uh, existing parking area will be, or um, playground area will be removed um, in its entirety and grassed over. Again, likely incorporated into that will be some level of that sort of landscape buffer concept that we're going to build in. But that'll it'll all go away and it'll look certainly better than it does now. Is there any shade trees being Any shade trees? Any shade trees? So we focused basically all of our budget at this point in time on equipment and pathways, and we're working at the surfacing. There's some cost delta between the surfacing options. So 
I guess once we finalize everything, we'll know what money we have left over for, 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 for trees. Uh, but Joanne is uh, here, and this is kind of uh, right across the street, but in this vicinity, it's our focus area for commemorative trees. Um, so if you have an interest in planting a tree, uh, we certainly encourage you to talk to, talk to Joanne. Uh, and I think as this playground gets more popular, as we fill out our existing grove, probably going to move across the street so to focus on continued planting efforts here. All right, great. Again, we're trying to keep this moving so uh, we can continue to talk about this. We've got the panels in the back if any uh, questions pop up uh, over the course of the meeting. So assuming everything moves along, we'll be looking at a fall installation. We're going to keep you guys uh, in the loop on all that. All right, so now I'm going to turn it over uh, briefly to Madeline. Uh, you saw her face earlier, and she is our specialty garden manager. Uh, and uh, if you've noticed, there's been a lot of action already this year in the uh, Rose Garden. So Madeline, come on up and pop your slides. Hey guys, again, before I'm introducing you, I'm Madeline. I'm pretty new at the Conservancy, so I've been on board for about eight months now. I started at the beginning of August, and uh, my first task was kind of assessing the rose garden. And uh, my assessment was that it needs to be for soap because <laughs> it's uh, pretty, uh, you know, it look a lot better. And uh, so we're going to kind of start out doing a phase-by-phase -phase project. At the moment, it looks like it's going to be around five years into completion. Um, but the spring will be starting on phase one. So yes, we've already started breaking ground. We've done a lot of soil remediation after we've had some test back. And we're going to start continuing that phase one as we continue into the spring season. So there's two. Okay, so a little bit of history about the Rose Garden. Um, it was designed in 1917 with the pergola, and uh, it was designed right after Marcy Casino was uh, created, and now it's been kind of a focal point in Buffalo with everything else going on within the Delaware Park area. Um, in the 1940s, unfortunately, with the Great Depression, we uh, did not have a lot of people focusing on the the rose garden maintenance and everything like that. So it did decline uh, significantly. But in 1966, the Buffalo Parks Department, they did develop a rehabilitation project. And uh, we've gotten a lot of support through the Western New York American Rose Society throughout the decades. Um, in 1993, the rose garden enhancement uh, there was a lot of volunteer support. So the Rose Buddies, which was an extension of the Rose Society, they really were the driving force in that restoration. There were a lot of roses brought in. And unfortunately, since then, you know, it has fallen into just a little bit more of an inconsistent maintenance. And um, there was a change of hands in 2004. So POPC did. Um, assume responsibility of this garden and through volunteer support and other uh, people within the staff of the OPC, we've been really trying to keep the garden alive. And now it's kind of just gotten to the point where, you know, with the pandemic and everything, there wasn't a lot of, uh... okay. Uh, you know, with the pandemic, it really slowed things down. We didn't have a lot of staff on site and now, we can have everybody come out and volunteer. And so now that's what we're kind of hoping to garner through this restoration project. So um, why do we need a restoration? Well, we saw that there was a need. We were able to have the funding supporting this project. And we've gotten a lot of uh, planning kind of underway to understand how exactly we're going to do this feasibly. So um, yeah, just you see that the need of uh, choosing different types of rose selections that are more appropriate to our area, um, understanding kind of uh, what the maintenance entails and also how to get the soil up to par with how it should be to support a beautiful rose garden. So we've done a lot of uh, research on the historic plans. We um, looked at the existing conditions, so we did a soil analysis. Um, we're looking at uh, programming and use. Uh, so we have a lot of weddings that come through there and the guys really enjoy beautiful walkways of flowers. 
And uh, we also are coming up with a maintenance strategy in Quincy. So um, I do manage this garden with my help of seasonals as well as volunteers in the community. So um, the restoration, again, I mentioned that we do have a budget in place and uh, we do have a lot of volunteers and staff coming through. We have a lot of support right now. I've been kind of in contact with the Western uh, New York American Rose Society and they seem very eager to help us out with the volunteer work and kind of helping community, community members that may not be as um, well versed in the rose planting. I don't want to get involved and help out and show everybody, you know, the proper way to plant a rose and maintain. So hopefully we'll have their help this spring. And uh, with our baselines, uh, our soil analysis was done this fall, which is typically the best time to get accurate results. So we did that through Barry One. Really helped us see exactly what we need um, to improve the site. And we're really focusing on the historic rose selection. So anything that was selected in 1919, even though it might not be right for our area because it doesn't fall within a hardening zone per se, or doesn't have the disease resilience that we're hoping for, we want to make sure that we are, you know, paying attention to the historic side of this and trying to find roses that at least resemble the roses that were originally placed there on site. And I've also been in contact with some local rosarians and different horticulturists, and they've really kind of helped me understand exactly the best. Helped me. So um, in this map, there's a small red outline. That's our phase one area that will be happening this spring. Within this area, we've got all hybrid tea roses that we'll be replacing. I feel a lot better here. Um, so the areas that are um, within this red border, um, so this area right here is rose specific, and then this over here, this is the purple actually, on the purple beds we'll have some nice companion plants and uh, bulbs that will be highlighting different seasons. So yeah, this metal walkway, that's where a lot of the brides come down and that's our first focal point, just in areas of importance, and uh, within the next phases we will eventually get to all of the garden. I went to arrows, so I don't know, maybe I ruined it. Oh, okay. All right, so yeah, this first uh, phase is happening right now. During that week, we're actually ahead of schedule for our soil remediation. So we brought in some really great new soil that is to the pH that we need it to be that will support a rose garden. And April and May, we're going to have planting dates that I would love for everyone who can to get involved with. We're gonna be the week of April 18th and also the second week of May. So if you wanna get involved, please do. Um, and then our next phase is going to be the next demo phase where we will be doing the uh, soil remediation at a better part of the year. It's going to be a lot drier, a lot easier to work with. It was pretty difficult last two weeks to get it out, but we did it. People think I'm crazy probably. Um, but yeah, so then we'll kind of be following in with another bulb planting to support the roses in the rose garden as well as that soil remediation. This is kind of just an overview at the moment of what I believe the phases to look at look like. And it would probably Standing even farther from 2026. But um, at the moment, this is kind of the best idea of what we've got going. And it's going to be a wild ride and it's going to be a good one. So if you want to get involved, we have a really great um, volunteer coordinator. Her name is Christy Munson. So you can reach out to her email or you can call it. Or if you want to use the QR codes, we've got them separated from the spring volunteering and then later on into the summer and fall volunteering. So yeah, more to come. Mm -hmm. But that is kind of what we have planned. And I hope to see you guys out there. And thank you for letting me have the shield. That's the bathroom for uh, Natalie. We could be in that back corner. Um, you know, with all of the panels, so uh, certainly they has been, been a breath of fresh air in here and very knowledgeable. Um, so it's great to have her on the team. Um, moving things along again through our uh, things you need to know portion of the agenda. 
Um, as you as you imagine are aware, at the end of last year, the city of Buffalo uh, made the determination to permanently close the ring road to vehicle traffic. Um, so this graphic just sort of demonstrates uh, the red area being everywhere cars will no longer be allowed. Uh, obviously, at all of the entrance points, so the trailhead parking exists uh, and will continue. Um, and also, what you probably notice is a lot of jersey barriers, a lot of temporary reflectors, a lot of uh, city made signage. Um, so, this was, this is again not the permanent solution. I could be happy to hear. Um, but, you know, it is a serious business keeping vehicles out of areas they're not supposed to be. Um, so, we uh, worked with the city. Um, as we are continuing to finalize with the community the exact form and shape and style of all of the permanent barriers, we needed to fortify things. Um, so uh, city came in, put these in. We've already provided about uh, 15 or so adjustments that need to be made just for our operations side of things. So it's been a great learning experience um, dealing with 20-foot uh, long uh, chunks of concrete. I'm, I'm sorry, is this the current configuration? This is, is I've earlier been out today. Thursday? This is earlier today. Earlier today. today. And then it's the Truman Parkway? Nope, this is right outside of oh, okay. here. Our going is on the top of the, top of, top of the meadow at the uh, concourse. And then have all of the entrances have now been done this year? All of the entrances have been done in this format. Yeah, this year. Okay. Yeah. So we are continuing to monitor. I think we'll, we'll learn a lot once you know the busy season picks up in terms of adjustments we need to make. Um, but again, info on the handout, you'll be happy to hear the city of Buffalo has a $300,000 grant. Uh, they have hired a consultant uh, who through this summer and in the fall is gonna be working with the Conservancy to sort of bring concepts to the public in terms of those permanent solutions. Uh, so that we can, you know, come up with that plan, but we also have funding to implement that that, that plan. Again, depending on the details. Uh, as long as we keep the gold leaf off the bollards, I think we'll probably get a fair amount of this done. Um, so again, bear with us as we ensure the safety of uh, people who are riding around the ring road, uh, assuming they're not going to encounter a lot of vehicles. Um, you know, we do need to sort of have some serious barricades up, um, but again, it should just be for this season as we are planning the look and feel of the, of the permanent solution. Um, so again, happy to talk about this more. If anyone has any burning questions, you know, I'll, you know can, can, can take them here, um, but uh, we'll, be, we'll be bringing information back to the community in terms of some of the ideas we, we, we have in permanent solutions. All right, going to go through this quickly as well. Uh, but the 198, I'm going to move this. I'm bugging me in presentation. Although, probably once they move it down here, important things will be at the bottom of the page. Um, uh, so, uh, the 198, uh, also known as Region Central, there's an ongoing uh, planning process uh, that is sort of wrapping up in terms of the initial phase. But the end of the first phase of planning just means the start of the next phase of planning. Uh, with these with these sorts of projects, um, but again, this is uh, being led by um, our uh, our metropolitan planning organization for transportation, the Greater Buffalo Niagara Regional Transportation Council, uh, and um, they have been doing a, a fairly robust community engagement process, identifying the issues and coming up with plans for the 198. So again, we've got some panels here to learn more. But again, to, to breeze through somebody else's project to make sure you're getting engaged. Um, there was some general consensus through their efforts that this is an out of date facility, not only from a transportation standpoint, from a community planning standpoint, and also sort of meeting the needs and priorities of the region. Um, Region Central, again, they're sort of rebranding this as not a road project, but a place building project. Um, so again, impacts of transportation infrastructure are not just on the thin ribbon of roadway space that they take up, but they affect the communities around them. 
and what we can do in those communities, and look and feel of those communities. Um, so they're really thinking about this holistically, uh, which has been a, a great change of pace in terms of this planning effort moving forward. Again, they've gone through many stages of this. This has been going on for about a year and a half, and they're at the end of the road right now in terms of making a recommended design direction. Through that process, they laid out four scenarios. They had a community meeting back uh, May of last year uh, where they laid all those out. Had a long period of time for, to get community input in. Um, they identified through that process community goals and metrics for evaluating those goals. Again, to sort of help them make sure they're making the right decision. Uh, and what they are recommending, uh, while you know, we're continuing to talk about if what we're calling this thing, uh, if we're calling it anything at all, uh, uh, the, uh, the idea is that a new roadway, parkway inspired, um, I always said one lane each direction, bike paths and sidewalks, removing all highway features, all ramps, um, all kind of, uh, you know, merge situations where you can, you know, ramp up speeds and, and zip from one road, road to another. Um, additionally, enabling uh, a lot of parks restoration as a result, a lot of energy assets and natural resources affected by this corridor. Again, a focus on safety and connection, a focus on health and vibrancy in the surrounding neighborhoods, and really a focus on sort of sort of rebuilding the economy and rebuilding these, these, these communities with the opportunity to create new jobs and sort of drive the, the economic development engine. Um, so again, you know, this is a plan for the, for the, for the community, uh, but it's really based on limiting the infrastructure of a, of a, of a, of a single lane, parkway, like road, edge to edge. Uh, but uh, more than that, is again looking at all of Region Central, looking at other routes, optimizing other roadways, you know, not only the couple miles that it is across the city, but over nearly 14 miles of roadways getting up, 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 upgraded, building the network. Um, again, thinking about the next generation of mobile, mobile mobility, all the various tech technologies coming into play, protecting the neighborhoods surrounding. Certainly, the neighborhoods that have been uh, that have been damaged in this community are likely to come raging back, and we want to make sure we protect those existing residents. Uh, but again, we're making uh, plans for improved transit, mobility hubs as a part of this. So, really, again, pretty impressed with the holistic effort that they brought to the table. Um, but again, what's important for you to know uh, is that. Uh, they are assembling as you can report right now. They are continuing. You know, if you have a community group you would like to get public engagement, I know we're we're we're, we're joining a group over at the east end of the corridor for a meeting next 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 week to talk with GP and I can see. Uh, they will come meet with you. Uh, they are starting to figure out the next step in this process, which is the you know, federally required environmental review process. Uh, funding is in place. In a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a major way for this project. Um, but again, they're sort of rationalizing all the various details there, taking the next step in more detailed traffic analysis, continuing to work with neighborhoods, continuing to work with project owners um, who are all going to be a part of this effort, sort of building out that whole nature. So we are pretty far down the road. Uh, we conservancy and uh, our partners think this is moving in a great direction, um, but it's never too late to get engaged. Um, so certainly encourage you to go to their, their, their website, check out the project for yourself, reach out, ask questions, get connected, um, but also we encourage you to get connected and get engaged with uh, the, the coalition of stakeholders uh, that conservancy is a part of, uh, who are kind of the watchdogs on this project. That's the Sujaco Corridor Coalition, our website there, and we're going to continue to work on this project, uh, getting our vision uh, out of the table. So as we move from planning and moving into more planning and detail design, you know, we still have our eye on the prize of restoring Humboldt Parkway, uh, reconnecting Delaware Park. Um, you know, we've we, we, we achieved 
recommending moving the roadway from the Stone Arch Bridge so we can return that our connectivity, getting getting people back on that bridge in a major way. Uh, and then as well as we head west into kind of no man's land other than just a legal pathway and you know fence lines along the interest of, of, of state, we can really make the Skajakota Creek in the middle of their community asset again. Um, you know, with with all these all these concepts on the table. So again, we're really excited about this process moving forward. But it's not our project; it's GB and RKC. So we encourage you all to get engaged in it. Uh, and um, certainly through the SEC, we're going to continue to try and raise awareness about it. So it's a big project. Uh, we can talk about it more, uh, but want to make sure you guys uh, know the latest and greatest info. So here was the decision. So basically, they are wrapping up their planning report. So again, through about three, four rounds of community meetings, they have a recommended design direction. So that then has to go through the environmental process. So it sort of goes through the ringer in terms of like, will this, will this approach work? What are the details of that? You know, how will it affect X, Y, and Z? Uh, and uh, that again will sort of refine the plan even more, uh, and that will sort of lead to detailed design, which will then go to construction. So, so uh, the way we sort of talked about it at the SDC uh, is, you know, there was a plan on the table to, for complete removal, and uh, you know that was very shocking to, 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 to some people. To the you know person only thinking about Olmsted Parks restoration, it's like wow, that could be an incredible opportunity to restore. Delaware, Delaware Park. Um, but what that proposal would certainly do is make it very easy to understand uh, this plan, putting a, a greatly reduced single lane roadway that still needs to go through all of these steps of the process. There's still a lot to figure out in terms of this, this sort of cash forward. So a lot of design, a lot of analysis. Um, and um, it um, it sound like there's still an opportunity to remove um, the Skijakura from Delaware Park. My understanding is that that ain't going to happen. That the, that the best we'll get is a single lane park all, all the way through the park. Right? Incorrect there? What I'm saying is that's the recommendation yeah. that is getting put forward is the single lane at grade roadway. Single lane in each direction. Single lane in each direction. Yeah, that's clarify that. Not a not a not, not a one-way road. So, so they are not recommending completely removing. So that is that is the issue. Well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Is there is there something that we can do to um, get that this, that decision considered again? Because I've been many um, sessions regarding the Jaguar and. My understanding from the most recent meeting, which was six weeks ago, um, is that um, they're recommending a single lane, two directions parkway. Yep. And that's what um, I would suggest, that unless it's merged somehow with the whole project, that that's what they're going. That's yep. the regional transportation folks. Yep. Going, right? So that, that's what they're going to recommend. But so the next step, yeah. as it's important to clarify, in the environmental review process, they evaluate a range of alternatives. Uh -huh. So you want to make sure that that gets studied in the yeah. environmental review. Make sure that's an alternative within that. So yeah. so, so they're recommending things because they're you know again trying to drive they're not, towards they're not the final decision. You're telling me that there are other decision makers that still have to be they'll have to buy in certain like EPA. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a step in the right direction. Again, you know. They are, yes. Have they given any thought to the amount of traffic currently on the road and whether they'll be able to accommodate that? Absolutely, yeah. And that sort of matrix of analysis they've done, uh, you know, they they are they they they've got very very serious, very very well respected traffic engineers involved in the project who have been modeling all the scenarios, those four scenarios that we talked about. They did a deep dive. In traffic analysis, um, you know, on all of those scenarios, and sort of how will they work, you know, and sort of how will, where will the traffic go, you know. But I think a lot of times, certainly myself, you know, not being a traffic engineer, you know, you, it's hard to really imagine other scenarios or 
other routes. And you know, these people have the tools at their disposal to sort of help them, you know, not make crazy decisions, not make crazy recommendations. So it's like they I would say that they great due, due diligence done, um, that they're suggesting a very feasible, very reasonable uh, alternative. But again, there's more work to be done in this environmental review process, and you know, um, they'll continue to refine that and do it in community meetings where they'll present it to the public. The DOPC or the New York State uh, uh, Recreation So yeah, there's a lot to talk about with this. I do want to keep track of time. Uh, not sure how well I'm doing with that. Uh, but uh, another very important project, Point of the Meadow. We've talked about this a little bit before. We did just this month, the Conservancy applied for uh, some additional money uh, to make sure we have this project fully funded. We got it. So we are moving forward with uh, total, total re renovation of the interior of the Point of the Meadow Shelter. Uh, and certainly some interesting information we found in the redesign process uh, with regard to the existing facilities, a lot of existing infrastructure, the conditions of the windows, the doors, the facilities. Anyone who's used this building certainly knows all these sorts of things in terms of access, handicap access challenges, so widening doorways, uh, making sure fully accessible, and enjoyable, maintainable resources in both the men's and women's restrooms, uh, and redesigning those for all full ADA accessibility. Uh, again, refiguring doorways, relocating um, certain elements, uh, and also some additional exterior masonry uh, improvements, um, just to make sure this is uh, going to last a long time. So, uh, uh, is that building cool. just a bathroom? Yeah, and a sketchy basement. <laughs> exactly. I mean, there's a couple of hallways, yeah. but yeah, I mean, in terms of there's some weird vestibules, uh, some good, good views of men's room and women's room. But yeah, that's basically an exit play from the point of the meadow side and soccer fields. We can walk down a corridor, but it just brings you to the back side. Uh, the so, yeah, it looks a little bigger than it actually is. It's really just, it's just the rest of the building. Um, but excited to make it, uh, um, you know, an improved condition. Uh, and as a part of this process, we built in HVAC 
So this will become a year-round facility, which is huge. So yeah. the uh, cold porta potty on the outside of the building for the winter. Yeah, think of the past. But yeah, so certainly, certainly some some real structure stuff to do. So again, we're full funding in place. Uh, we've already gone through the full design development process. Um, but again, it's a simple building, it's bathrooms, we got to make those safe and accessible, uh, and, it's, and it's walkways. Uh, so we're going to be putting this out to bid over the course of the next three months, and hopefully by summer, contractor in place, uh, and, um, you know, certainly as fast as they can, so we're anticipating, you know, through the fall, through the winter, into spring, summer, um, this building will be under construction. So. Uh, while it's going to be a great thing at the end, it's going to be a little bit of an inconvenience prior, prior, prior to that. Um, so again, we're going to be working and making, you know, Delaware Soccer Club and other groups aware once we have a clear construction schedule, um, you know, how it's going to impact their terms. All right. Built? What was this built? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I it's I, I want to say 1940s for this building. It's these tan brick buildings. There's this one, there's the police radio tower. Um they all got these sort of green uh tile, tile roofs. Um so yeah, I, I want to say that's like a like a 1940s era. But I, I should know that. Sorry. All right, and uh, last thing in terms of major updates, we've been talking about this quite a bit, um, but a uh, uh, tennis and pickleball discussion. This this conversation came through the Olmstead at, 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 at advisory council with a with, with a uh, uh, active user group or interested potential user group for pickleball, bringing it to the table. Uh, a very sort of fast growing, uh, from what I understand, if ever done it, uh, enjoyable sport. Um, so the conversation has been ongoing. Um, part of that conversation being a uh, uh, sort of inventory of existing tennis courts um, with the idea that uh, opportunity for conversion of tennis courts to, if not multi-use, uh, conversion over to pickle, pickleball courts. Again, we presented this towards the end of last, or the, the conversation started at the beginning of last year. Uh, we invited the group in. They made a presentation to the Design Review Committee in June of last year um, uh, with, with uh, basically, a, as we re re requested, a few options on the table or sort of uh, you know, prioritized possibilities. Um, looking at both the general bass courts, the adjacent soccer field uh, south of the general mass courts and the uh, uh, Route 198 courts. Um, through that process, you know, talking with this with, this, with the city, the Conservancy's initial recommendation back um, due to, you know, our basic understanding of current, current use of, of, of courts, that the Route 198 courts uh, were certainly under underutilized in poor condition and a great opportunity for easy conversion over giving that information back to, to, the, to the group. Uh, that next step in the process is a more formal proposal coming, coming back to the Conservancy and the uh, city, uh, which is in the works, close to being done. Um, but from, 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 from our understanding, it is again gonna sort of focus back in on looking at the general vast courts as their recommendation for conversion over. Um, you know, so again, we'll be working through next steps on this with the community. Um, but, um, you know, basically through that process, uh, the, oh, let me just skip over. There's these, these couple slides, um, but sort of through, through, the, through that, that, that process um, with, this, with the city of Buffalo, we work through basically, uh, you know, exploring these, these proposals with a very thorough, very serious application uh, process. So we're, we're, we're asking up, up, up front for consideration of locations uh, and rationale. We're thinking about the uh, sort of making sure that there's good community consultation, which we'll be sort of helping with and participating in. Uh, a clear understanding of 
what it takes to construct something like this, a clear understanding of, of everything, all sort of legal aspects, all of the maintenance aspects, uh, sort of financial fundraising efforts associated with that. Um, so to make sure we've got a real good proposal, a real good understanding, so we have a real good conversation uh, about, um, you know, uh, considering a new feature and impact to existing use. Um, so more of just a status report that this is, I think, nearing the next step in the uh, process. Um, you know, if you are excited about pickleball, a step in the process towards potentially seeing that within a uh, city, 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 city park. Um, but um, certainly just want to sort of demonstrate that there's, there's, a, there's a very sort of serious and thorough process to considering adding um, new recreation features uh, into the uh, park. So, so pickleball is, is uh, continuing down the, down the path for consideration. And I think uh, stay tuned. This may, depending on timing, uh, turn out to be one of those special meetings we have. Um, so with that, I uh, want to just quickly touch before we uh, open things back up on um, the next phase of planning. Um, so again, everything sort of got rolling in 2018 with planning the last five year plan, uh, which uh, we are sort of chugging along in 2023, on, but we need to start planning for the next five year plan, which will be kicking off in 2025. So the planning for that, uh, you guessed it, will begin in 2024. Um, and uh, uh, that is again going to be a very thorough process throughout the course of the year. Uh, multiple rounds of meeting. We haven't quite figured out how we're going to merge the Olmstead Community Alliance. It likely will kind of take over the Olmstead Community Alliance process uh, over the course of that, 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 that year. Um, but sort of very timely with the uh, Thinking about things like uh, introducing uh, pickleball into our parks or sort of other park uses, what we want to do at the front end of this planning process, where we start again thinking about projects for the future, uh, is take a snapshot. Uh, the snapshot will be uh, this summer to next summer on how people are using the parks now. So, uh, again, we'll, what we're going to hopefully do is involve you all or interested members of, of each community uh, in park user survey election. Now, don't worry, this, this isn't like going up to and you know asking people questions and all that. What we're really looking for here is just basically consistent snapshots of how people are using the park. So just, just basically observing and counting and cataloging so that we can sort of marry you know how we think the parks are used with the evidence on the ground. Um, so we're going to be planning and setting up and re re recruiting folks for this for the data collection with some training. Right now, planned loosely in the beginning of this year, um, but then basically we just want to make sure we're going into this planning process in 2024 uh, with good information at the front end and continuing to gather more and more detailed information about how people are using the parks um, so that we can have that as a baseline, uh, making decisions uh, about uh, the facilities we invest in, things we invest in, and um, sort of uh, uh, where, we, where we go forward and considering new things that don't exist. Uh, so exciting stuff to come on the uh, planning side. Uh, and um, you know, certainly lots of projects ongoing. So. Uh, with that, uh, we always like to leave a few minutes for things not on the table, uh, haven't been presented. Um, anyone has anything they'd like to raise? Yes, yes, ma'am. This is all very exciting. First of all, in addition to this going on for years, that I'm hoping that we can continue to see the county in Colorado and nothing is ever done is on these jobs, not only on the local but also on the other and no time to get promises that I could see because for a long time we are really confused and we are over the city and we are over the city responsibility. I've been back, but I need to thank the owners of the city who employed me, the one with their dogs who had me. Um, and I've seen this happen to other people too. I'm not alone in this. And, oh, 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, it's true. And you know, I, 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 that's certainly very serious. And, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so, the comment is uh, issues with off off leash dogs, specifically on the Rumsey side, I think they describe described by the golf course, golf, course golf course side of this. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is not solely a Delaware Park issue. I, I, can, I can assure you uh, a variety of sort of ranges of issues. Um, where you know the the sort of levels of this are is there proper signage? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Is there proper enforcement? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, and you know from processes in place are you know while it may not be what you want to hear three one one is the number to call. Uh, I mean, I, I think much more. There's no point. I think much more. Than you. They're not just the dog chasing them. It's not higher. Yeah. yeah. By the time they get there, it's too late. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do know uh, just to sort of reinforce uh, that there is value in three one one. Is that all of those calls are logged? They do get. They come to a center and they do get distributed to the the sort of um, department of government that where, where they belong. Um, but there is a, a head of list. So so as as things come to a head, and you know there is an effort to sort of raise more attention to this, they're going to go back and look on uh, sort of they're going to pull all that data out and they're going to see like is there a concentration of issues on this. Um, so it, it does behoove you to continue to to I do don't that. I call anymore, and everybody I know who has an issue with this doesn't bother calling me. It's been so many years. years. I understand. Yeah, I mean, so we'll, we're we're gonna document this. We're gonna follow up on. We'll 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 circle back to, on this with you and to this group at our at our next next gathering of of, of this. I do encourage people not to get discouraged because it because it, it is it is valuable on some level to continue to have these things documented uh, for the sort of call to action uh, down down the road. But um, you know, we are looking at a number of things in terms of deficiencies in signage, which is the first step. To get enforcement is the next step. And again, it's going to be a group effort to make sure that those things happen. So thanks for bringing it up again. Apologize that we participated in, you know, not, not meeting your expectations. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna circle back and, and and try and figure out how we take at least a step of making sure the signs are up. We can we can we can definitely bird dog that effort. I think uh, this question came up first and then probably so just said Quick response, like if there is a dog attack, we should absolutely call the police. So, you know, that needs to be documented, uh, you know, often that something that happened to the dog owner um, or something like that. So, if there is an attack or injured, I mean, 911 call, call 911, you have to get treatment, get a medical record, have it all documented. Um, but if there's a dog attack, absolutely call the police. Right in the front, then we'll go. So, um, can you talk a little bit about the search for the replacement for the president? You know, ah, um, not in great detail. I guess I, I, sorry, I wasn't anticipating this. Uh, I don't know why. But <laughs> can I just make one more comment? Sure, yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. I actually just heard that. Are there any dog parks in the area? There are. Well, yeah. Uh, La, La, La <laughs> had one, but La Salle Park, uh, which is becoming Rocco's and Centennial Park. Can't really speak to the current state of that, but, but uh, that is again sort of a, a conversation. I think as we go into the next five year plan, you know, we, you know, what they're dealing with and sort of trying to understand the process for thinking about pickleball, you know, dog parks do come up from time to time. so. Again, these are these are not 
Olmsted Park's issues, these are city parks issues. Um, so making sure we're thinking about things at the right scale, um, that, that's, that's a great, great point. Uh, for those of you who, who uh, have, have not heard, uh, our executive director did just recently announce that she is going to be moving on. Uh, and um, uh, thankfully and wonderfully, uh, she is not leaving in two weeks, uh, but she's sticking around for 60 days, so two, two more months. Uh, over that, over the course of those 60 days, we're going to be sort of developing our sort of transition plan. Um, our, our, our chief, you know, again, gave notice to our to our board. Um, we had a, a, a somber staff moment last Friday uh, where we discussed it. Um, but the next 60 days are really going to be where we sort of work out um, not only the sort of plan for you know how we're transitioning to sort of in the short term, but sort of building that plan to board is working on the developing a search committee uh, and um, you know is, is, is exactly moving in that direction but um, certainly sticking around we're in good hands we're going to have a good plan uh, and um, you know the, the transition will be will be smooth uh, and um, you know uh, you know we're sad sad to see her, see her go but we just got a great opportunity down in town of Florida it's to near her kids uh, gets to bring her uh, mother down there with her, so so it's good. It's good for her. We're happy for her, uh, and uh, uh, she's certainly with Buffalo you know, for the for the long haul and making sure it's a smooth transition. So I can I can tell you that, but we're um, you know taking it one 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 day at a time uh, and figuring out the next steps. Yes. For me, the biggest issue issue has always been. Why is the golf course still there? I mean, it, it takes up about a third of what, 100 acres or so. I don't know the exact numbers. But it's about a third of the whole park. Of all of the park. Uh, and that's the part that but, but the jewel in the crown of the Wilson and the meadow. Yeah. The Lake, and it just seems like a handful of people really are preventing the majority of the people in the area. And Buffalo is from using that. I mean, it's just breaking it breaks my heart. And I used to live in Central Park. And I can tell you, during the pandemic, at all times, that a good place of tranquility. And walking along that 33 is, or the 198, it's not a place of tranquility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, when, what can be done about it? I, I don't know what strange hold the golf course has on okay. I saw it. 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 I saw the second that too. I was going to have this been a discussion on if we're going to do that nine holes. So we could use some of the extra space for some other outdoor activities. It was originally nine holes. No. It was. Okay. It's been there a hundred years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one of the one of the great things about you know this this is sort of the last thing I just mentioned in terms of the park user analysis is we're gonna we're not just gonna it's not just gonna be you know people walking around but this this is from two thousand four so this was some of the old information that we used sort of going the, in terms of our sort of planning uh, in the in the past but what we're gonna do is again study every aspect of how the parks are are are, are being used so we're gonna pull in the data from all of the leagues all the rec leagues, sort of current sort of golf usage. And we're gonna sort of go through this and we're gonna make some smart decisions based on based on how the parks are being used. So so to sort of get to those discussions, while there's sort of personal preferences, you know, if you're a golfer, it's probably your favorite thing in the world. If you're not a golfer, you don't understand it at all. If you know just keep a lot of people along a spectrum and a, and a range. So I think Getting this good data collection is going to be one way to sort of help us make smart decisions. But then, as well, on top of that, I think, you know, these sort of conversations about how should the parks be used, you know, how do we balance all the uses, you know, how do we do all that analysis, you know, we're going to be able to sort of have that have that conversation. Yeah, because it's helpful to just clean up the park. I mean, clean up a dozen or so cities in the country that have almost six parks. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, those, those are those are factors as well. I mean that you know that you know there's 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 a couple 
places to go with those types of thing, um, numbers is, you know, do we need to build more parks? You know, that is that is one step. You know, also how are we maximizing the use of our existing park land is another step. So again, you know, a lot of these conversations have sort of happened. It didn't it didn't uh, get enough fervor in the last five year plan to sort of take any next steps. We did engage the uh, National Golf Foundation and they had done a little bit of a sort of analysis of, of all of our golf courses, which I'm going to sort of we'll, we'll rope into that conversation. Um, but, um, you know, certainly a lot of big, big, big topics to, to, to discuss as we start planning the next the next five year plan. Yes. What about the one cap? It has had more maintenance, as I can remember. Segments of it, huge segments are and kind of greens. Is anything going to be done with that? Or is that being Where is this? Yeah, the running cap. The, the running cap. Is that being a death by neglect? Or yeah, I mean, so we did. Uh, we did a little bit of maintenance on it. We added some 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 sort of some grit to it a few years back. Um, but I think that's going to be part of the conversation about um, the sort of closure of, of, of the ring road. I think is to you know when we were when we were having conversations about you know how do we sort of space people out during during COVID, it was like do we need to make improvements to that path with cars off of that road? I think we need to do an analysis of are people going to be using it? You know, if people do like to use it, you know, they were a lot of people wanted to use it to keep away from the cars. There's no more cars. Is is it something we want to invest in, or is it something we want to eliminate? We want to keep portions of it? I think these are good, good, good discussions, and I think we're going to have those conversations as we sort of take the next step in this reroad conversation. So we'll we'll circle back on that. But maintenance wise, uh, good points. We got them documented with, it, with daily maintenance. We'll do, I think, what we can to maybe clear up some of the big tunnel areas. Um, but, um, you know, I think where we want to go with that path and, and sort of the whole ring of conversation is something we're going to dive into uh, over the summer. Yes. Part of that, maybe we consider perspective bike lanes in the, in the best parks I've been in the country, like in Minnesota, they've got separate bike lanes so that the bikes are not interfering with pedestrians and kind of limiting injuries. Yeah, yeah. I mean that uh, they're they're now the fastest moving thing on that on that on that road. Right. So they were again mixed in with vehicles in certain sections, but then it was kind of a free for all in other sections. Mm -hmm. So I think it, yeah as we sort of go through that ring road conversation, how we want to manage the all the types of traffic in that 36 feet of roadway, uh, I think will be a part of the conversation. In addition to, I think, a focus on how we're dealing with those sort of entrance points. But that's, that's a good thing we won't leave off the table. Yes? A lot of the oldest, biggest trees have, uh, are dying or have fallen down. What's the plan to going forward how to uh, make sure that we're going to have the next generation of trees? Uh, up and the same shade yeah uh well so oh, no. we had the october storm back in 2006 so i can tell you i was around for that and i know we started planting a lot of trees back in 2007 2008 2009 but the best answer to your question is get a time machine and go back and plant trees 50 years ago um but what what, what we are doing is sort of always trying to sort of prioritize projects based on community interest. So uh, if it is of great interest that we're doing more reforestation than through our commemorative program, which is making a great bet, um, but on uh, a major scale. So we need to hear that in terms of park priorities um, moving moving forward in the uh, five-year plan. You know, it's a lot of times you know, you've got limited money to invest, so you do it where you know people are most interested. And that's how we sort of go through this project planning process. Uh, and um, you know, we, we certainly what I can do is sort of get you the numbers on certainly since 2007, how many trees we have planted. Mm -hmm. And I think you'd be happy to hear what that number is uh, when I when I get get it get it for you. But you know, if 
if there's more to be done, and certainly the loss of a 150, 200 year old tree uh, is dramatic in the moment. Um, but unfortunately, the replacement is a very slow process that you know we just need to be staying on top of. So uh, I can assure you, we've got our forestry team out there working very hard. Uh, that every tree that falls down, it absolutely has to. And it, it, in terms of everything that can be done, that was a bad way to put that. Uh, uh, every 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 tree that 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 that, that comes down. Uh, well, the fewest trees come, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Basically, the no trees fall uh, that could have been prevented uh, through maintenance work. So again, instead of making sure that you know limbs uh, that uh, are unsafe are getting cut and sort of brought down properly, trees that are dead are getting taken down gradually by trained foresters. Uh, and you know, the storms, unfortunately, you know, sometimes trees that look very healthy uh, are not once you get into the core of them. Sometimes, you know, quick thawing of the ground can leave a, a frost layer and trees become more susceptible to damage if there's major wind events, which this year has been crazy with compared to like high wind events that we've, that we've had. Uh, but good maintenance of our tree, of course, this is what I'm trying to say, good preventative maintenance of our tree canopy uh, is is the key to preventing those things. Um, but reforestation work uh, is sort of that sort of proactive effort to make sure we're replacing those trees. And, and I've noticed the year where it seems like a bunch of trees have gone in and some have made it, some haven't, and then there's kind of a gap where not much seems to happen unless it's somewhere else that I don't uh, that I'm aware of. Um, I just want to know, like moving forward, is there a plan to keep on putting trees in? Yeah, like maybe 50% sometimes don't make it. Yeah, well, we try and pride ourselves. I mean, there certainly are those those, those circumstances uh, where uh, you know, groups of trees will, will have, you know, 50% of survival. Good maintenance for those first three years, which, which we commit to for every tree we put in the ground, um, you know, provides the opportunity for those trees to have the, the most success. Um, so, uh, you know, again, we're not... We're not, uh, I guess, over eager to plant trees we can't maintain. So we're, it's very important to us to make sure that you know we've got a proper plan, proper funding, and not only to buy the tree, but the ongoing maintenance. Um, so um, again, this, these were things that came up in our last five-year plan uh, in a couple of our parks, prioritizing tree, tree, tree plantings, which have happened uh, in MLK and uh, gonna be this year in Front Park. Those were in our five-year plan, um, but you know, in Delaware Park for this this past five-year plan, you know, fixing playgrounds, fixing bathrooms were just the priorities uh, for that. So again, sort of the interest in the community, um, in addition to us making smart decisions about keeping these parks in good shape, are kind of how we drive where we prioritize. So. You know, when those funders come in and then we do good tree planting certain years and don't do them in other years, it's kind of all the ebb and flow of sort of where we're putting our fundraising efforts uh, park by park, district by district. So noted here today. So I think we're heading in that direction. Uh, but as we get into um, 2024 and start prioritizing what we want to do for the next five years, we need to continue this. Um, we're getting short on time, so I, if, you're, if you're tabulating input from some citizens, I certainly want to take back on trees. I mean, playground, pickleball, it's wonderful, but we need trees, and I see so many places where trees have come down, and yes, they clean them up, they take them away, yes. I don't see any plants in them, so that's one. Wait, my other two things I'd like to just put it on the list is, if there's any plan for any Area, um, less mowing, you know, a little more wildflower pollinator possibility. Mm -hmm. And what is the park's relationship? And I'm not expecting you to answer this, but with leaf blowers. I mean, I have walked the park <laughs> when there is no, and there is crews of these poor guys that can barely speak English, but they're happy because they got a job. I feel like we're taking advantage of them. And that, the, the, the field and the noise and there's such nothing 
And you know, we're so horrible, you know, and even the things we're disturbing by blasting all these leaves out of the curvy area. It, it's whatever the smells, the sound, and the violence to food. So we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just, you know, if anyone has burning questions, I'll stick around as long as anyone wants to. Uh, I know we are kind of moving on time, so. Uh, just like, how okay. much are the plans considering all sets of plans for the best part? Because I, I feel that that is like a, a really priceless thing that we have to design for the best part of the And I think at the most, about, 60, about two thirds of the plan was ever implemented. And yeah, it just takes the golf course and then exclude that. Because, uh, you know, so, 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 so talking about that conversation about part of the plan, the plan treatment part, I just wonder how much all of that is going to be. Yeah, so one other great thing that is going to be going on simultaneously, again, it's not anything you guys involved in, so I didn't bring it up, but it's on one of the boards somewhere around here is. Uh, uh, we are currently, I have an RFP out that it's uh, getting my uh, feedback on in two days for updating our natural register nomination. So this is the document, oh, I guess it's right behind us here. Um, so this is the sort of document that, um, that basically created the uh, historic preservation of Yolmsa Parks through uh, you know, the, the Historic Preservation Act, established this, this national register of historic, historic places. Um, which again prioritizes the preservation, restoration, and you know stabilization of the historic integrity. Uh, our nomination is from 1979, right. uh, so we are uh, early and over the course of the next year going to be rewriting that, bringing it up into modern form, and resurveying all of the parks. Um, so while we are going through this planning effort, we're also going to be having sort of the latest and greatest information at our disposal about that sort of historic story you know what is what is where is their integrity where do we need uh, you know historic features brought back um, so um, you know I think you can trust uh, that the filter that the conservancy always puts projects through is making sure that we're doing no damage to that historic integrity and where possible um, uh, raising raising the bar on that level so so certainly it'll be just sort of ingrained into this planning process uh, and certainly you know a, a filter and measure of every project being proposed uh, is its impact on that historic integrity so so that'll be certainly a filter that you know things won't get past past me in that regard I can assure you uh, but we're gonna have great information uh, over the coming year coming out so great great, great point so Exciting, but not really necessarily exciting for the public, I guess. Exciting for me. All right, good, good. All right, so with that, again, I'll stick around if anyone has any burning questions, but thank you for uh, sitting here. We've gone, I think, to our anticipated stop time and over. Uh, apologize for that, uh, but great conversation. Thanks for, thanks for coming up. <laughs>